Every summer, stadiums across America will be packed with fans, but the true game is played far from the field in state houses and courtrooms throughout the country. The players aren't athletes, but billionaires and lobbyists, and the stakes are hundreds of millions of dollars in taxpayer money. In state after state, billionaire owners manipulate our passions for sports, crafting narratives that defy economic logic to reroute public funds from essential services, things like schools, housing, and transportation into their own deep till. Most of the time, as a fan, it feels pretty helpless. It's despicable, right? And it's an action and it's a move that should be despised by any and every community member. In Nevada, John Fisher, the billionaire heir to the Gap fortune and owner of the Oakland A's, plans to move his team to Las Vegas, armed with nearly $400 million from taxpayers. We saw some of the headlines and we set out to investigate. And what we found left us wondering, are these deals actually inevitable? Is it possible for cities that are typically pitted against each other to unite and fight back? Is there hope for fans and public budgets? We have a, a real crisis situation in Nevada schools. That's Chris Daly. He's the political director for the Nevada State Education Association. For decades, Nevada has grossly underfunded public education. We rank 48th in the country in per pupil funding, despite having uh, some higher cost of living here. So in 2023, educators set out to start fixing Nevada's public education system. Public education is an everyone issue. They held rallies, pressured the government, and got a $2 billion a year increase. That was great, but you have to keep in mind, uh, with factors like the increasing costs to operate a school district, even with that $2 billion, we didn't really catch up much. With the legislative session dwindling, educators rallied at the Capitol. Their demand was clear, more funding to reduce class sizes and increase educator salaries. If they didn't get it now, they'd have to wait two years for the next budget. The legislature's response to us was, you know, we're sorry. The session ended with no additional money allocated. The very next week, uh, the third week of May, John Fisher and Dave Caval from the Oakland A's uh, showed up asking for a handout for a new ballpark in Las Vegas. The legislator called a special session to vote on giving John Fisher, the owner of the A's, hundreds of millions to move the team from Oakland to Vegas. There are decades of studies that have all found that there is zero economic benefit to building sports stadiums. That's Neil DeMouse. He co-wrote the book on sports stadium controversies. All of the evidence shows the same thing, which is that the worst possible thing to spend public money on is a sports stadium. Yes, you heard that right. The University of Chicago recently asked 43 economists if stadium subsidies were a good deal for taxpayers. Only one said they were. It didn't surprise us after the fact when, you know, the A's made $100,000 in contributions to, to legislators, most of whom voted for the package. They hired up about a quarter of Nevada's, you know, kind of lobbying core. The legislature opened up the checkbook. In the end, passing a package worth $380 million in, in public funds. Over 500 miles away, something interesting was happening. Oakland A's fans were fed up with John Fisher. Nobody should go into business with John Fisher. That's Brian Johansson. He's the co-owner of The Last Dive Bar. It's an Oakland A's fan group that sells t-shirts for charity and helps start the fan movement against Fisher. I think his parents and family probably want to disown the guy with how bad he is in business. Fisher earned his billions the most American way possible. Oh, he got that from Mommy Doris. He inherited his fortune, right, from the Gap. The fortune was built. Uh, let's be honest, largely on sweatshop labor. In 2005, he used part of his fortune to buy the Oakland A's. This is a team that's been rooted in a community for over 55 years. Um, championship after championships, um, iconic dynasties in the 70s, and, and the Bash Brothers and Ricky of the 80s. I mean, it, it's, it's people's entire lives, you know? I mean, it's tattooed right here on my arm, you know, it's never going away. And they promptly became one of the worst organizations in sports. This guy just bumbled and fumbled his way through it to where it's just become the laughing stock of the league. And it's all because Fisher refuses to spend his money. 
on players, on repairs. During the height of the pandemic, Fisher was the only owner who tried to stop paying minor league players. Like this guy has had every excuse in the world why he couldn't, you know, stop poop from flooding into the dugouts. So fans stopped going to games. The team is currently dead last in attendance by a wide margin. Fisher said he was losing money and he more or less placed all the blame on not having a new stadium. I'm doing this because I want to win. It's very difficult to be consistently great in this game if you don't have a new stadium to drive the revenues to make it all work. <laughs> this is the Bay Area. This is one of the richest areas. You're on revenue sharing. You have a $67 million TV deal. How are you losing $40 million? That's just preposterous. Professional sports in, in North America are like almost the definition of cartel, right? You've got a very limited group of very rich people who have an asset that they're not going to let anybody else get. And they use that for leverage at every opportunity. The teams and our fandom is that asset. They're scarce. So when owners want to, they can extort communities to pay them hundreds of millions of dollars to keep their teams in town. It's all, you know, fairly embarrassing for MLB what's going on with the A's, but you know, I mean, other owners aren't going to complain because they may want to use this threat someday themselves. According to Neil, there's actually a playbook owners follow. We're going to threaten to leave if we don't get a new stadium. The president traveled to Nevada today again to check out what Las Vegas has to offer the team. There are huge economic benefits from getting a new stadium. From jobs at the Coliseum to Little League team uniforms, the impact of the team has been deeply rooted in Oakland. And they sort of cycle through these. One doesn't work, you just go to the next one. Will the Oakland A's stay? Will they go? Will they stay? Will they go? Faced with the inevitable, the A's fans' position became... This part of the story doesn't have a happy ending for Oakland fans. John Fisher will probably not sell the team. The team will probably leave. But there is some hope for Nevada public schools and for a future in which states and fandoms can actually fight back. So Schools Over Stadiums is a committee that the Nevada State Education Association set up to fight the use of public funding in the proposed new ballpark for the athletics. So Schools Over Stadiums, like they're all about taking that public money away and kicking John Fisher in the nuts. And so we're all about kicking him, you know, in the nuts as well. The teachers union is fighting Fisher's handout on two fronts. They claim the whole thing is unconstitutional and are suing to stop it from happening. They also want it to go to a public vote. Let the people decide. When you ask the public, do you want to put public money into sports stadiums? The answer is almost always no. It just happened in Kansas City. The Hunt family, one of the richest families in America, one in Missouri to spend half a billion dollars building them a new stadium. They're now threatening to move the team to Kansas after Missouri voters said no. Recent polling in Vegas had the same result. 52% of the voters said they opposed it, while 32% said they support it. The hard part is getting on the ballot. Shortly after filing for the referendum, attorneys from John Fisher sued to stop that from happening. The dude is literally suing teachers that are just fighting to get public money for schools. You're a billionaire, you don't need their $380 million. We are fighting uh, John Fisher's lawyers in Nevada courtrooms on two fronts. Uh, and so those legal bills do run up. In May, the Nevada Supreme Court ruled in favor of Fisher. The vote won't be on the 2024 ballot. So the group is targeting 2026. Schools Over Stadiums estimates it will cost at least a million dollars to gather enough signatures to get that referendum on the ballot. This is where Oakland fans have come in. We've raised a couple hundred thousand dollars. Oakland fans have been exceptionally generous. Most of our financial support and backing has come from Oakland fans. We've always sold, you know, wristbands and stuff like that. The last dive bar sold I Stand of Oakland wristbands, donating 100% of the proceeds to Schools Over Stadiums in Nevada. Another donor matched whatever they raised. Meanwhile, Oakland protests and activism started getting national media attention. 27,000 plus fans came out to yell good wood, good. again and again, inning after inning, sell the team, sell the team. And it, it was just a beautifully organic thing. What does it say about sports in America to you? That everything I came to know and grow up to love about it was all a lie. It was just some cheap, marketing ploy 
to just get money out of me. They've built something that I don't think we've seen uh, in this country in, in, in decades. And that's genuinely a, a people powered movement while not overtly political. It's necessarily anti-corporate, right? Anti-billionaire. Billionaires should be paying for their own stadiums, right? If we can help prevent other fan bases from losing their team, other communities from being exploited by these billionaires, and you have politicians working in unison with fans saying, no, we are not paying for your stadium, that's the ultimate goal. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe to our channel. If you have ideas for stories you want us to uncover next, please drop them in the comments below.